Hey guys, in this video, we'll make a simple scratch game where the keys are falling and you need to press each key before it falls to the ground. It's really satisfying and great for keyboard practice. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's start this scratch tutorial by heading over to Google Drawings. Well. Google Drawings allows us to draw some costumes with features that Scratch doesn't have. And when we're ready, we can just export into an SVG and then import it into Scratch. If you don't have Google Drawings or just want to skip this step, don't worry, there'll be a bare bones project linked in the description. Let's start by designing this key. Head over to the shape selection and then select the square with rounded corners. Then drag across the screen and then you have a perfect square. To make a perfect square, Press and hold shift while you drag. Now that you have a perfect square, you can resize it while still holding the shift key and center it. Now, the colors are a bit generic. Let's select this square and remove the border completely. Then let's set the fill to be a gradient, such as this one. Now our key looks awesome. So let's export this by choosing File, Download, SVG, and then we can now head on over to Scratch. First things first, let's delete the cat. Now let's create a new costume by choosing Upload. Here's where we can select our key. Wow, this key looks pretty big. Let's resize it. I'm going to set the size to about, um, why is there this border right here? Well, this border is what happens when we export from Google Drawings. It isn't necessary. So let's delete this border and any other weird shapes that Google Drawings has added. Press Control or Command A to select all the objects. Then press and hold Shift and click on this object. You notice that it keeps everything selected except for our square. Now when we delete, the invisible shapes disappear and we are left with just the key. Now that we got that annoying border out of the way, now that we got that annoying border out of the way, we can resize the shape. I'm going to resize it to match 110 by 110, but you could do any size that you prefer. All right, let's finish our first key by adding a letter. Let's create a new piece of text and then type in A. Then Let's choose a font and a color. Finally, let's resize the letter and then center it. With all that done, let's get coding. First, let's drag out a when green flag clicked block. When we start the game, we will want to make clones or duplicates of the keys. This means we will want to hide the original sprite. Let's also set the size to something about 50. Next, drag out another when green flag clicked block and then a broadcast block. What we want to do here is create a message that, when broadcasted, starts the game. Now, let's start creating some clones. When I receive, start game, let's forever create a clone. We also want some time in between each clone, so let's wait a few seconds for each clone, such as two. Now, when we press the green flag, Nothing seems to happen. That's because we haven't shown the clones yet. When I start as a clone, let's show. Now, when we run the code, we can see the clones being made. Great. Now, we want the sprites to go up, then down across the screen. Let's start doing this by setting a random position. Let's drag out a go to, then random, negative 200 to 200 for the X, and negative 180 for the Y. Test the code, and we now see clones being made on the bottom of the screen. Let's have these clones launch upward from their current position. If you've ever used gravity in your projects, you may already know how this works, but if you haven't, here's how gravity works. You see, we set a variable called gravity to a number, such as 10. Then, each time in a loop, we move upward by gravity, and then decrease gravity by a number like 1. Eventually, the sprite stops going upward and starts to go downward. Now, let's add this to our script. Create a new variable called gravity and make it this sprite only. This makes sure that each clone has its own gravity variable and it is not shared between any other clones because for this sprite only also applies to clones. Now, when the clone is made, let's set gravity to, let's try 10. Now, in the forever loop, Let's change y by gravity. This will move it upward. Then let's change gravity by 
negative 1. Now, when we press the green flag, we can see the key move upward and then downward, as if it's being launched from the bottom of the screen. However, the key barely goes anywhere and it falls pretty quickly. So let's start by changing the ladder. I prefer changing gravity by negative 0.5, which is half of negative 1. Then we can also change the amount it goes upward. To add a sense of variety, let's make it a random number. How about between 16 and 19? Now, testing the code again, the key reaches the top of the screen and then goes back downward again. Great. Now, we want to get rid of the clone when we press the key. Let's check if the key is pressed by setting it to A. Then drag out a delete this clone block. Now, when we test the code, we can press the key and it disappears. The game has just started to take form. Currently though, we only have one letter to press. We need to add 25 more letters to make this a complete game, assuming that you're using an English keyboard. If this seems like a daunting task, don't worry, you can just jump on over to the Bare Bones Project in the description. However, if you're up for the challenge for making every single letter, just choose some text, type it in the letter, set the color you want, and then resize it and place it in the center. Now, once you've done all the letters, let's choose any of the 26 costumes to display on the screen when we create a new clone. Drag out a switch costume block into when I start as a clone. Then let's choose a random costume between 1 and 26. If you use a different keyboard, make sure to change 26 to the number of costumes you have. Now, hold on! How in the world are we going to check if the key is pressed for all these costumes? Well, we know that all the costumes are in order from A to Z, and we can get the costume number, which will be the number of the letter of the alphabet. So, we can just create a variable called alphabet with the entire alphabet. Then, get the letter, costume number, of alphabet. Okay, so now we can press the key to make it disappear. But what happens if it reaches the bottom of the screen? Well, then we should lose the game. So let's add that functionality now. Let's drag out an if block into the forever loop. Then, a less than block. Let's check if the y position is less than negative 190, meaning that it will be at the bottom of the screen. If so, then let's stop all. Now, we can press the green flag, and our game is a lot harder now, as we have to press each key before it reaches the bottom. Quick, where's the letter U on your keyboard? Just remember, do not look at your keyboard while playing this game. Now, it would be very cool for the keys to churn as it falls to the bottom of the screen, so let's add that go ahead and create a new variable called churn for each sprite only. When each clone is made, let's set churn to a random number between negative two and two. Then let's rotate clockwise churn degrees in the forever loop. Let's try it. When we press the green flag, we can see some of the clones churning way too much. Imagine if the letter out turned to 90 degrees. Someone might confuse it for a minus sign. Keys sideways can be really hard to read. So we need to change this. To fix this possible misunderstanding, drag out a divided by block and add churn to it. Then let's set this to four. Add this back and this should decrease the amount each clone churns. While we're at it, let's make sure each sprite's rotation is set to 90. In the when green flag clicked script, point in direction 90. Let's take a break from aesthetics to head back over to functionality. We have a way to lose, but how about we keep track of the score before we lose? Let's start by creating a variable called score. You can leave it on for all sprites. Then let's set score to zero when we receive start game. Now, when we press a key, let's change score by one. We now have a working score system. Now, let's add a cool effect when each key is pressed. Maybe we can have each key slowly fade out after it is pressed. Let's do it. In this forever portion, drag out a repeat 10. Then let's set it to five. Then drag out a wait block so that it fades out over a period of time. Let's set this to something small, such as 0.01. Then 
let's change the ghost effect by 20 each time, which will make the clone invisible at the end. Finally, let's clear all graphic effects when the clone is made. Now, when we run the code and press a key, it slowly disappears. Awesome! You may notice that the game doesn't currently change or challenge you in any way once you get the hang of it. So, let's increase the difficulty of the game as we go along. Let's create a new variable for speed and set it for all sprites. Then, when we receive start game, let's set speed to two. Then, drag out speed into here. Now, let's decrease the time in between each clone being made as the game goes along. Make a new when I receive start game block. Then, forever, let's wait, say, eight seconds. Now let's change speed by zero minus speed divided by 10. This will have to tie in between each key being made slowly gets smaller and smaller until it reaches zero. If you try the game again, the game gets harder and harder because the keys fall faster as the game progresses. Presently, all the keys are currently blue. So let's add a sense of variety. Let's drag out a set color effect block. Then let's set it to a random number between 0 and 20. Now, the key colors are both blue and purple. Hey, that reminds me of something. Blue and purple. Blue and purple. Blue and Finally, to finish our game off, let's add some sound effects. We can use the audio library to find sounds, such as when we press a key or when the game ends. Let's start with when we press a key. Let's start by clicking here, then here. Searching around, I found this sound, which contains a series of sound effects. I really like the last sound it makes, so let's add that one. Then, we can drag and press delete to delete the previous sounds. We can keep fine-tuning this until we have just the sound. If you make a mistake, just press the undo button. Next, for when we lose the game, I really like the clean sound. Now, let's head back to our code. Let's drag out a start sound bop when we press a key. Then, let's start the sound clean when we lose. We should finally start the sound bop when we start the game too. Congratulations! You just finished part one of this video. In the next part, we'll add some special features, such as a main menu system and a way to show our score on the screen, other than the variable. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. Watch out for that video. Be there or be MC squared. See ya. That was terrible. We gotta do that again. Be there or be MC squared. See ya. I can't do it. I really can't do it anymore, guys. This is terrible. I guess I just say, see ya. Oh, let's go. We did it.